Right, so I'm putting the crossovers together on these, but first I need to change this tweeter because if you remember, um, one of them had a frequency response that sort of had a big dip in it and a rise, <clears throat> and it was this tweeter. So I've been sent a replacement. So we'll get that in there. Can't actually physically see anything wrong with it, but often you never can. So while the iron's warming up, let's have a look. I've also got all my crossover components. Um, annoyingly, Impact Audio sent me the wrong inductor. I ordered a uh, what did I order? One milli Henry, I think, and they've sent me a 1.5. Um, when I was doing my measurements, it was actually a, a 1.05 milli Henry I wanted. So um, all I'll do is just unwind this, keep measuring it until I get that exact value. But I have contacted them and I've heard nothing, which seems to be how everything's going at the moment. Um, we've got our capacitors for our tweeter and for our woofer little inductor for the tweeter and our good resistors as well so we are good to go and some binding posts so what i'm going to do is this is the back of the speaker the back baffle and i've lined it in felt just takes off that hollowness um, and I will probably build up the crossover on this, sort of point to point. The problem is going to be mounting that, because I don't want it flat. I could keep it right out of the way down here and we wouldn't have any cross torque problems. Because um, I don't really want to build this all on a board, I want to keep everything compact. So I can... glue these on, do what we need to do, yeah, I don't know, you have to figure this out, hmm, anyway, we'll get back to that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. One thing I want to experiment with when these are all done is if you looked at the measurements that I took last time, there was a little bit of um, kind of a dip in the tweeters response. And when you look at the phase relationship, you can see, see where the crossover point is in the phase relationship, but you can also see um, a change in phase higher up. I think it was around 10 or 12 kilohertz, something like that. And I think that's baffle step from the tweeter. Which is possibly one of the reasons why the LS35A had a foam square to correct that. To get the reflections that would happen on these sharp edges and bounce back cause a phase problem out the way so when i finish these i will experiment with that because it might be the case that we want to do that as well so yeah we'll see i mean the 35a was an amazing speaker um and for good reason so it may well be that that was something they corrected ah 
has a crack in the magnet. That might have something to do with our odd response. It's always good when you find a problem or, you know, see a problem to be able to find a reason why. jubbly right <clears throat> so we needed a 1.05 milli henry inductor and the dc resistance of the one we were using when we were building the crossover was 0.8 of an ohm so currently this is 1.1 ohms and 1.45 milli henry so that resistance is going to decrease as we unwind this so yeah we might just bullseye it really so we will see so what I need to do is screw that down and unwind it can you see that yes you can There's so many holes in this from doing things like this Yeah, but we're going to have to take a lot off this. Really, I should start winding my own inductors. You can get these bobbins, and this laminated wire isn't expensive. So yeah, I should start doing that, really. So it looks like we've gone a bit too far. That's a bum. Hmm. Right, never mind. Can't say it's as easy to put it back on. Almost, almost. That will do. That will do. Right, I guess a little bit strange the way I'm doing this because I'm building the crossover on the backboard, um, which will mean it's not on a on a board that's taking up space inside here. Um, it will keep everything nice and compact. The only thing I wish I could do, and I can do, but I mean some bracket or something, is have this inductor 
um, orientated 90 degrees to this, but we're more than 200 millimeters away and that really does kind of knock out any cross torque. So um, we're not in close proximity to need this really um, turned around. There's a good distance there. So I'm not too worried. Um, and yeah, just having all this screwed down nicely, that screw is right in there. It's not gonna compromise our inductor. Um, we can keep this really compact. It's not gonna vibrate or anything like that inside the cabinet. Um, everything point to point soldered. So yeah, just uh, better all round really. To our inductor here with our positive uh, we are through the coil out to the positive of our, of our woofer and then we're picking up a resistor and our capacitor down to ground and what we'll do is give ourselves a bit of room we'll go there like so Nicely point to point connected, no circuit board traces, anything like that. Just how we like it. So what we're gonna do is pick up the negative of our woofer here, and also a negative lead going down to the binding post. Yeah, so these speakers have generated um, quite a bit of uh, interest, really. I've had some really nice emails from a couple of people that um, kind of follow my channel religiously, um, which is nice. And yeah, it's obviously um, these little mini monitors are something that a lot of people are quite interested in and into. So yeah, glad some of you are finding this interesting the only regret i've got with these is that i haven't used a, a woofer that i can get more of um i don't know what these woofers came out of originally um but i can't find any more of them so what i should have done really is started with a five and a quarter inch woofer that i could get more of because um, I've looked into uh, making these cabinets. In fact, there's a cabinet builder fairly local to me that I've done a few bits and pieces for. And he's offered to make these cabinets very simple. Um, just the top, the sides and the bottom. I would make the back and the front baffle here. Um, but to veneer them and to um, lacquer them as well. The tweeters are readily available. I've got a supplier for those who actually sells a five and a quarter inch woofer that I would probably be interested in using um, in making more of these. So this might be something I actually make and sell. Because um, like I say, I've had quite a bit of interest in these. And I really would love to... Um, yeah, build my own speakers to sell. Um, also, I'd do a bigger brother version of it with a, a six and a half inch woofer. Not just the five and a quarter. 
I even make a four inch version as well, but I think that's getting a bit too small. So there's kind of a family of them if you wanted to use them as your front left and right and you had a surround system as well, you'd use the small ones. But then you could build a center as well and oh God, anyway, we'll see. Right, so that's that done. Let's put some glue on there as well. Hot glue, yeah. Right, fantastic. That's our woofer done. That might not look particularly pretty, but that's, mm, yeah, good. I like that. Right, so next we're coming down to our tweeter. So, there. We've got a resistor and two capacitors to pick up. So really I want them, I don't know, probably there. Or like that. Yeah, okay, they can go there I think. Right, something like that. Beautiful. Right, our 3.3. .3. Uh, originally that was a 3, but um, the tweeter was playing a little bit too loud. So I've knocked that back a bit. Okay, so that can go in there. We're going to come in on our resistor here through to our capacitors out here to the tweeter and also pick up our inductor down to ground so we were in phase weren't we Super duper. So what we do, we'll 
pick this up on the way. Super. Turn that around a bit more. Right, okay, so positive in, picks up our resistor to our capacitors, whoosh, out to our positive of the tweeter, and also down to ground via our inductor, and that will pick up the negative binding post there, the negative for the tweeter on the binding post, and the negative for the woofer, do all those at the binding post. Then we carry on through our positive, through our inductor, whoosh, whoosh, out to our woofer and also through our resistor to our capacitor down to ground. Perfect. There we go. Nice and compact on the back. Um, yeah, no boards taking up space or vibrating in there. So there we go. Right, so I've bought these binding posts which are really thick and chunky um, and they're all, I don't think there's anything magnetic in them. Nope, nothing at all. So that's good. Uh, they're all brass, I think. They were quite reasonably expensive. But we got big holes in here, and also this is reasonably thick, so I wanted something quite chunky. And uh, yeah, they'll take a banana plug, and also pretty large um, bare ends if you want to put them on. So yeah, I'm going to solder them up, and then this one's done, do the other one. Right, so that's it all soldered up. Positive. All our grounds, all our negatives. Um, yeah, all point to point. Perfect. Right, time to put them all back together. 
Right, so I've just been making the cover frames for my little two ways and these are cut out. I need to just run around the edges with a router just to roll them off. Um, but yeah, they're basically there. Then I'll paint them up and cloth them. Yeah, so there we go. That's what we got on the speaker. They're a bit proud, which was the idea. Um, so yeah, hopefully once they're felted and clothed up, they'll be there. So we're pretty much, apart from doing this, done. Loving it. So trying to get set up for some measurements and the cat decides that the chair with the blanket on it is actually really comfy. Really helpful, Oliver. Thank you very much, okay, mate. Okay, so I've just done my final measurements on these and uh, yeah, very, very pleased with them. Um, I've done a lot of listening to these and made a few little adjustments um, by ear, but really and truly, um, after I did the initial measurements, built the crossovers, um, I didn't really have to do much tweaking to them. Uh, I added a further resistor to pull the tweeter level down a bit further. Um, but other than that, uh, the 2.2 microfarad capacitor on the woofer circuit, I increased, I think, from memory. Yeah, not by much, um, just because it was... I needed to roll it off a little bit steeper um, but really and truly uh, they are as I originally measured and um, the values I originally came up with um, and they've been great fun um, I've really enjoyed listening to these um, they they're, they're a typical narrow baffle small driver um, two-way that images nicely um, female vocals are really good the high frequencies really crisp and sharp um, I'll put the measurements up shortly but their horizontal off-axis response is really good in, in fact you're better off and I found through listening as well not towing these in just keeping them flat because their horizontal off axis is really good. In fact, they probably flatten out a little bit more when you're 10 degrees horizontally off axis, which is great. Um, it means that you're not really limited to that sort of head in the vice central listening position. Um, and also I find the measurements flatten out when you go above the tweeter level slightly as well. Not much, um, really tweeter can play at ear level, um, but you can listen to them slightly lower. So if you've got shorter stands, then um, then that's that works. Um, moving the microphone down below tweeter axis, still good. Um, so yeah, measurement wise, they're, they're fantastic, um, but it's all about the listening and I've really enjoyed them from the first evening when we plugged them in in the lounge um, you know I, I expected probably to listen to them for half an hour or an hour to get a feel for how they sound and by ear what adjustments I might need to do but four hours later we were still listening to them um, and that says a lot they do a lot of stuff well um, I find them very accurate very detailed what you'd expect really um, a reasonable amount of bass as well which was quite surprising 
Um, and yeah, I've I've loved them. They're a, a great little speaker. So I've made covers for them now, which I've lobbed up some pictures. Quite nice, very um, fuss free. Just a, a frame um, covered in black speaker cloth. Uh, the soft part of the Velcro, the loop, and a little pull tag um, because they do hold on there quite well. Um, but they've just turned into, they're just a lovely little speaker. Um, very pleased with them. I think they look look pretty nice, feet on the bottom there. Um, and yeah, in terms of setting them up, I found, as with most speakers, the further you push them against the wall, the more base reinforcement you get. Um, the further you pull them out, the better the imaging becomes. And really, I was most comfortable with these only about a foot, 16 inches away from the wall, um, which means that they don't have to be pulled into the room much. And that was a, a really good compromise between base reinforcement and just how they imaged. Um, and yeah, like I say, they, for their size, I think they sound bigger than they are. Um, but very pleased. And because this tweeter has got a 35mm dome, the crossover point's about 1600 hertz, which really helps with the off axis. The lower you can cross your tweeter to your woofer, the better. Um, it just helps with its off axis performance. And if its off axis performance is good, then the way it interacts with the room will be much better too. So um, that really helps with being able to put them in your room and set them up. But yeah, dead chuffed with them. Um, I've listened and listened and I haven't really recorded any sound clips, um, which I will do. Uh, and I'll stick those just in a separate video. Um, the sound clips I have recorded, I can't put on YouTube. They'll be copyright strikes. Um, but yeah, dead pleased with these. And they're now off to my mate Kevin for him to get his ears on them and to have a listen. And uh, yeah, see what he thinks. Really, I'm sending them to him uh, just to get another pair of ears on them. Um, and he's got some very good electronics. So um, because I, I still think there's possibly some tweaks I will want to make. Um, and then when I think I've got them right, he can properly review them um, but yeah I'm pretty happy my only regret really is um, not starting with a, a woofer that I can get more of um, because this cabinet is an easy construction the front and back baffle easy construction this tweeter um, I'm going to use this on some other projects because I've been really pleased with it and if I'd started with a with a woofer that I could get more of then um, I could build and sell these um, and I've had quite a bit of interest in that and I would love to do that um, that's my only regret I, I don't know what this woofer came out of um, which is a shame so yeah I'll call this a prototype and I think I'll probably do I'll probably build it again but with a different woofer um, so I can build more of them so uh, yeah anyway I'm waffling on again Thanks for watching and um, hopefully you'll see Kevin's review on these at some point soon. And uh, yeah, catch you all so soon on more videos. Cheers.